Welcome to Archetypes. I'm Lee Woodruff, and I'm here with Julie Kent, who is a principal dancer for the American Ballet Theater. It's fun to see a creative, bright person sitting in this chair and ready to talk about what it takes to do something that grueling, because I can't personally imagine what it must be like to be so completely focused on something that is physical, creative, but also just mono. Your world has to shrink down to where you are in the moment. I should just say now, at the beginning, I'm a mother of two children. I have an eight-year-old son and a three-year-old daughter. So my world is wow. much bigger than mm -hmm. it was 20 years ago when I was promoted to principal dancer at ABT. Can you just describe what that means? It's basically the highest uh, level that you achieve as a professional dancer. So does that mean that you are the lead dancer yes. in every Yes, so when I dance? perform, I would be performing a principal role. Okay. So I would be the swan queen, I would be Sleeping Beauty. Are you athletes? I do not consider myself one at all. And, and a lot of people do. I would. Just yes. think of what I right. know about ballet. I would think you train, you work physically extremely yeah. hard. It's all about the motivation why you do it, though. I'm so not motivated to work my body to achieve anything except expression. So that's what motivates you? Yes. I think of little girls, and I myself was one who wanted to be a ballerina when I grew up. So I went to the ballet class, got the little tutu, who's with me out there, the little <laughs> pink slippers. And you know what, I was not very good. It's frankly the, the bottom line. What will you tell your daughter if she says, Mom, I want to be a dancer? Um, of course, I'll, I'll support her. But what I will stress to her, and one of the things that I've learned in my career that is so important and I feel like is part of my responsibility for people to understand, is the benefits of the pursuit mm. apply to anything. It's not that you're going to be a ballerina, but in trying to become a ballerina, you will learn so much about so many things that will help you to fulfill your potential that you have in, in wherever it is that you have that, that real talent. So is that kind of then the takeaway, the lesson, because we all can't be, you know, the the principal dancer. That's we all right. can't be the person who discovers the cure or, you know, is the smartest in his class. So it's what But we all can be excellent in what we do. That's what I feel like art in particular helps to distill because the pursuit is really pure and noble. And how do you deal with the attention of being because you strike me as such a girl next door. But yet there you are. You've got the plumage on. You're doing Swan Lake, and it's you. You're jumping into the arms of somebody. You know, that, that takes a, a very different focus to be the center mm. in what you do and to have everybody looking at your body. What does that feel like? I mean, you, you know, performing isn't for cowards. You have to have guts. You, have, you are putting yourself on the line when you step on the stage. And you're, it's like, here are my guts, check them out, you know, this is my soul, this is what I'm made of. You can look at it. How does a shy and person do that? In the forum of a performance, you are not yourself. When I go on the stage, I'm not Julie Kent doing the Swan Queen, I'm the Swan Queen. You know, There's I, two Julies. There's Julie on stage you, you, and Julie You here. commit yourself to what you're doing to a point that you are no longer yourself. But at the same time, in that process, you, it's necessary for you to totally reveal who you are. Because it's you, as you just said. It's your instrument. It's your body. It's your whole thought process, your whole artistic process that puts that performance together. Bershnikov once said, when you step on the stage, you take with you every decision you ever made in your life. And that, that's what, what I took that to mean is you're putting everything out there. And you're raw. Yes, because you can see it. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about mm -hmm. the stage. Somebody walks out there, the way they carry their body, they're revealed for who they mm -hmm. are, really. And it's a beautiful, beautiful, generous thing to do. Was there a moment that you felt or said to yourself, I am at my absolute peak right now? Could you feel that? Hmm. Um, you know, there are 
lots of peaks. There hasn't just been one. Mm -hmm. Having a, a child gave me an, another peak, which I think surpassed probably my first peak because I had such a different perspective on my work. Earlier in my career, before I had children, it was almost as if my career was too important. I wanted too much from it. And it was like, I want that. <laughs> but you and were there, get, you were touching yes, it. Yes, but we're talking about, you were talking about such detail in a performance. Why did I didn't do that? That little, something that it, maybe you wouldn't notice or maybe nobody would notice, but inside what I wanted from my career, I, well, I wasn't getting it. I wasn't reaching, I wasn't fulfilling you it? for myself. And but isn't that, I'm going to stop you here because I think this is a really interesting point in life and some of the people who I know at the top of their field say that when you get to that point where you can say, I nailed that or I'm great or I don't need any improvement, that's the moment that you fail. Oh. And the people who are the most successful and I the best. I wish we had talked before because <laughs> well, <laughs> I never heard that. <laughs> I, I'm actually married to someone who's a reporter and he is always self-critical. He feels like there's always room for improvement. Well, and if you attain yes. it, then what do you have to reach and for? You, you know, you're right. And that, you see, that is, that's the artist's work as well. It's never, it's never, right. what, it's never what you want. Right. But after having a child and all of a sudden my career took a oh, different place, jolt, different place, it was just easier. I could just get the coffee or the <laughs> cup. And I just was coming at it from a whole different way. It had a much healthier place in my life that gave me a lot less frustration. Finding that balance and keeping that passion alive, why is that important? Basically, I feel like all of us every day just try to do the best we can <laughs> with everything. But in that pursuit of trying to do the best you can for your children and the best you can for what you love, that in itself is, I guess, what we're supposed to do. You know, just pursue trying to do it the best you can and take comfort knowing that you're not alone. Julie, this has been incredible. I feel like I'm sitting with a professional athlete, even though she doesn't see herself that way. <laughs> but I've always been awed by the just the sheer physicality of dance in addition to being creative. And I think you've enlightened all of us on what it takes to be that creative person and work against some incredible odds. So I want to thank you for being here and talking to all of us and sharing your passion. Uh, and thank you for being part of Archetypes. Thanks, Lee. Thank and you. we'll see you soon. Thanks.